As we mark Earth Day tomorrow, ABC News White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks travels to Battleground, Pennsylvania to report on the effort to turn out voters who care about climate change. It kicks off our network-wide series, The Power of Us, covering emerging solutions for our changing world. Emily Church is a biologist turned activist. I'm aiming for around 80 today. Knocking on doors in Pittsburgh, she tells me she used to spend time pushing lawmakers on climate change, but lawmakers told her voters didn't care. The people who prioritize climate and uh, the environment need to show up. If the voter comes to the door, basically just follow the script. The Environmental Voter Project is targeting very specific voters, environmentally conscious citizens, often young people and people of color, who rarely head to the polls. Of all the ways to work on climate change, why this? Uh, because uh, yeah, yeah, people who vote or who politicians pay attention to, and so they make the decisions. And that's our biggest problem in the climate movement right now. We don't have enough voting power. The group's founder, Nathaniel Stinnett, says they've had some success. We've sometimes increased turnout out as much as 1.8 percentage points in general elections, 3.6 points in primaries, and 5.7 points in local elections. Okay, if I'm being honest, that doesn't sound like a lot. Ask Donald Trump how big a deal 1.8 percent is in Pennsylvania, and I'll tell you. The group is nonpartisan, though acknowledges it's almost exclusively Democrats right now working to address climate change. They hope they can push Republicans to come to the table, too. We want to scare the bejesus out of as many politicians as possible, no matter what side of the aisle they're on, until they think, you know what, the only way I can win elections is if I start recognizing the biggest crisis that humanity faces. But that's no easy task. Across the board this election, registered voters list immigration, the economy, abortion, and democracy as their top issues, with climate change not even making the top 10. Partisan and generational divides at play. Basically, the younger the voter, the more they're likely to prioritize climate change as a voting issue. And yeah, that is going to be a, a reality that Republicans are going to need to grapple with eventually. In November, the choice before voters is stark. But many Democrats worry young progressives might still stay home, despite the Biden administration investing billions to fight climate change. What do you say to those young voters who argue he hasn't done enough? Well, the fact is President Biden has done more to address climate change than any president in U.S. history. And there's a lot more to be done. Scientists have said that we still can not avoid the worst of the worst of the climate crisis, but what we do in these next few years is essential. Nathaniel says big policy matters, and too often Americans have been told to focus on their own small habits. Hey, don't pay attention to that coal-fired power plant back there. Instead, it's all your fault for having a plastic water bottle in your hand. And we bought it. When in truth, it is far more of a political and a systemic problem that needs political and systemic solutions. It's an uphill battle, but for Emily, finding and activating these new voters is worth the fight. The science is very clear, so um, we know what we need to do. It's just a matter of getting it done. For this week, Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Pittsburgh. Our thanks to Mary Alice, and be sure to catch more of the Power of Us series across ABC News this week.